practically family. <laughs> hey, Radha Raman. You're always on the move somewhere when you're checking us out in your car, you know, outside the house. <laughs> hey, hello. Oh, there we go. <laughs> the fan club, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Hi Sky, how have you been planning the retreat so far? Are you on the penultimate session? Oh, why can't we hear you? No? Okay, you can chat. You, you, yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay, that's cool. I get it. Body language. <laughs> Ah, who else do we have with us? Mm, I see Havisha, but I don't see Havisha. I see tulips. Havisha, where are you? I'm here. Sorry, I'm like not sitting in very light, a lot of light. Okay, yeah. one second. No okay. <laughs> yeah, how have you been finding the retreat so far? Oh, it's been really wonderful. I think it's... um. It just showed me that, you know, although it, it seemed like, you know, so gloomy that we were in this lockdown and the retreat might get cancelled, we've had like, I think um, we've never been like, as a Bhakti Yoga Society, more connected internationally. Mm. So, I think it's really special. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for attending so many of the sessions. It always oh, gives me so much joy. You know, I know preference was to students and I was like, I'm I'm a fresh one. <laughs> I'm freshly yeah. out of there. Maybe they'll let me in. <laughs> You're a student. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Once BYS, you BYS for life. That's just how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't feel like I grew up yet, so <laughs> if that counts for anything. <laughs> then stay young. <laughs> Uh, who else do we have here? Um, I don't recognize some names. Oh, there's Radharani. Hi, nice. Krishna Radharani. Do you want to say hi? <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Radharani is coming from BT. Oh, we have a second. Okay. Should we get into it? I think so. Let's add Chandra Shekhar and Gyana. Uh, okay, they're here. And if we can put the spotlight on them. Uh, so, okay, let me just do an intro first. So Chandra Shekhar and Gyana Shamutra are going to be doing for us um, a cooking demo. Uh, Chandra is a chemical engineer who's in the fuel production section of Sassel um refineries and that's Guyana they're both there mm -hmm. wave guys <laughs> uh and they're also like Chandra also Chandra Shekhar is also someone we met at BYS and, um and now he's going to show us a demo he's also one of my favorite cooks because like whenever he's whipping up something it's always interesting <laughs> and um he's if you ever read the Hare Krishna news he is the Vaishnava chef in the column, uh, and so yeah, let's just cheer them on and see what they can show, what they can share with us. Thank you, guys. Over to you, guys. Spotlights on Chandra and Gana. Cool. Hey, Rukmini, I noticed this uh, video is a mirror image. So if I'm moving right, it's moving left. Is that normal? Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess it is. You're just gonna have to. Um, okay. Do the math, Diana. Let's start it now. <laughs> All right. Carry on, Chandra. Okay. Very good to everybody. Um, so most of us are in lockdown. For us in South Africa, we're in week five of the lockdown. And um, for many of us, uh, we were really frustrated being uh, confined to our homes. So I thought of doing some comfort food today just to ease the frustration that we experience. And uh, one of the best comfort foods I know of is uh, pizza. So that's what I'm going to demonstrate today. So it's a very uh, unique pizza. Or it, 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 oh, it's different from your usual pizzas. Uh, so there's some interest there. And um, we're also going to pair it off with uh, a sweet salad. Uh, 
So uh, we've lost audio. Okay. Okay. We can hear you now. Okay. Sweet so Alex. we're going to try. We're going to pair sweet and savory taste together. So for the pizza, we're going to do something a little bit unconventional. Uh, we're going to do a butternut, uh, pine nut, and uh, baby marrow pizza. And uh, we're going to top it up with some uh, sage, sage and butternut heads. So the most important thing when making pizza is the base. Um, the base, if, if the base is uh, flavorful and or full of flavor, then uh, it sets the foundation for a really good pizza. And so even if you have very simple toppings, as long as you have a very flavorful base, you're going to have a winner. And the converse is true. If you have really good toppings and a very bland base, then it, you're not going to have a very good that's so, very interesting, Chandra. Um, Giana, just be careful. I think your hand may be covering the speaker at some point. So sometimes you can hear it loud and sometimes it's softer. So just make sure the speaker okay. is fine. Uh, that's interesting. So what, what would you use to flavor the bases? Well, the base is flavored by fermentation. So it's kind of a deep thing to the... Giana, uh, speaker. I'm not blocking the speaker. Okay. So Chandra, just a little louder, please. So the, 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 the dough is going to be flavored by natural fermentation. Where, and we're going to use yeast to ferment the dough. So the yeast is going to uh, feed on the complex sugars and the flour, and it's going to release flavor. So when we're making our base, the trick is to let the dough ferment for at least an hour, and then you're going to get a really flavorful dough. Sure. Show us how it's done. Okay. So uh, when when I make stuff, because I'm an avid food uh, uh, foodie, so I look at a lot of a lot of recipes, and uh, over the years, I've seen so much that I pick out elements that I've seen in certain recipes, and I combine them with other things, and I make my own, make it my own. So what we're going to do today is use uh, uh, the base, uh, the the crust recipe from a really renowned chef in our bhakti uh, um, culture. His name is Kurma Das. And uh, if you don't have any of his books, I really, really highly recommend you get some of his books. They're available at all our centers. So we're going to use his base, the pizza-based recipe from his book called uh, Great Vegetarian Dish. So we're going to start out with... Uh, one cup of lukewarm water. And I'm gonna use a, uh, a, uh, an electric it's mixer. Warm. It's warm. I'm gonna use an electric mixer, but this can be made by hand. I'm just using the mixer because of the time constraints. No, we use but, the mixer because we're lazy, be honest. Yeah, that too. And I have a soft, I, I, I have a soft spot for gadgets. I just love gadgets. You have so, a what? Uh, I just love gadgets, kitchen gadgets. It's my thing. Oh, soft spot for gadgets. So, so uh, just a little note on the water. You need the water to be uh, just hand warm. You, you should be able to keep your hands in the water uh, for at least 15 seconds without it becoming uncomfortable. It needs to be completely comfortable. If it's com comfy in your hands, then it's comfy for the yeast. If the water is too hot, it's going to kill off the yeast. So, just to get the yeast started, uh, and we're using instant yeast. So this yeast is inactive currently in the state. So we're going to activate it. So the yeast also needs some sugar to get it going. So we're going to add a teaspoon of sugar. So that's one teaspoon of sugar. Yeah, one teaspoon of sugar. And we're just going to stir it a bit just to dissolve the sugar. It doesn't have to dissolve completely. The sugar will dissolve. And we're going to just sprinkle the... It's a 10-gram sachet of yeast. So we're just going to sprinkle the entire sachet. It's about three teaspoons. We're just going to sprinkle it over. And we will just give it a little stir. 
because we want to hydrate the yeast. That's the whole intent. And by doing so, we're going to activate. Is, is that a tiny whisk? <laughs> yeah, it's a tiny whisk. Oh my word, that's so cute. It's still a little bit different, bro. Yeah. Actually, I also got one of these in a Christmas cracker. This past, this past Christmas. A Christmas cracker. Only yeah, Chandra gets whisks in a Christmas cracker. This I got in a Christmas cracker. <laughs> This is somehow Chandra's, look at Chandra's uh, set of tools and gadgets. Oh, and there's some more <laughs> things here. Okay, so um, <laughs> while the yeast is hydrating, we actually need to give it about five minutes to bloom. You need to start seeing the whole uh, yeast uh, and water mixture froth. If after five minutes it doesn't froth, it's highly likely that your yeast is dead and inactive and uh, you'll have to unfortunately discard that batch and start fresh but it's it's necessary if your yeast is dead you're never going to get that nice rise in the dough and you're not going to get that that nice deep flavor that you want in the crust so it's really important so while this is uh, activating and we're testing the yeast to see it's still active i'm going to move on to the butternut uh, so for this recipe we're going to roast the butternut uh, not steam the butternut and we're roasting it because we want to uh, develop more flavor in the butternut. By roasting it, you're going to caramelize whatever sugar is in the butternut. So you're going to get a nice sweet taste. And it's going to really intensify. And it's also going to be roasting over a slower period. So you're going to really intensify the flavor. So it's going to get a, going to get the oven ready. Real fan of the roasted vegetables because that that sweet caramel flavor that you get without adding any sugar is really something, and it's so simple. Like you know, being vegetarian can sometimes be seem to be difficult, but you just come from work, throw some veggies in the oven, and go do what you need to do and come back later. Now, so that's what's one of my favorite things. Yeah. Okay, so I've got a 130 grams of butternut. It's cubed into one centimeter cube. And uh, we're just going to space it out in the baking tray so that it cooks uh, a little better. If it's too close, you're going to hinder the cooking. We're going to give it a light drizzle on the oil. Extra virgin, 100%, I hope. Yeah, it's extra virgin, it's gasso. Gasso is the best. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then we're going to lightly season this. So we're going to use uh, a generous pinch of salt. And then we're also going to season it with freshly ground black pepper. So really, if, if you can, use freshly ground black pepper. Oh my word, it's to... mechanical. That's another okay. gadget. <sighs> Mr. Gadget. I just have to say, it is a big deal when you use between using freshly ground black pepper and the powdered stuff. You know, it it's is. like it's a huge difference. <laughs> it's the real when stuff. You your spices, if you pre ground black pepper over time, it loses its flavor. So um, when, you, when you grind it freshly, you get the real flavor. So that's it. It's ready to go in the oven. It's got a light. Yeah, let's just toss it a little bit. Let's just coat it, coat it evenly or somewhat in the olive oil and the spices and then we'll separate it again. So we're going to bake it at 180 degrees mm. for about 15 minutes. Mm. Often people feel like if you're making vegetables, uh, you have to drown it in spice, but actually like just some black pepper and salt can do a lot to get uh, the flavor of the vegetables out. Would you agree, Chandra? Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, the vegetables, I mean, each vegetable has its own unique taste. So you don't want to drown it in spice. You want to let the, the taste of the different veggies come through over. OK, so coming back to the yeast, you can see, you zoom in, you can see that it's frothy. Mm -hmm. So that's bubble, active bubble. yeast, so uh, we're good to go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put in four tablespoons of olive oil. Mm -hmm. 
by the way, this recipe is for two 30 centimeter pizzas. His and hers. Yeah, if there's time, I'm uh, gonna do a bonus recipe. So four tablespoons. And just pour it in there. And we're gonna use three cups of cake flour. So I'm just gonna show you the correct way of measuring flour. So, okay, first I'm gonna show you the incorrect way. Right. So this is the incorrect way. So you got your bottle of flour. The incorrect way is to take your cup and do that. That's the incorrect way because you're really compressing. That's the, the way flour my mother taught me. By doing it like this, you're actually getting more than a cup of flour in there. It's very compact. Okay. So it's really going to throw your recipe off. So the correct way is to take a spoon and spoon the flour in. And that is going to really ensure that you don't uh, put too much. Because see, in this way, it's not compressed. It's still. You can see the very... engineer coming out, huh? <laughs> so that's one cup. In, we'll just put another two cups. So I'm going to do it with the pasta. Just level it up now. That's the correct way. So that's two cups. So what happens if you use the old method? If you use the, old, the incorrect method, then you're going to need more water to get you that soft, smooth dough. Because you put in more than three cups of flour. So you need extra water mm -hmm. to get you that soft, supple dough. But then you also <laughs> throw the quantities off. And then we're going to put in half a teaspoon of salt. So when you're working with yeast, don't let salt come into direct contact with yeast. Salt will deactivate the yeasts. So it needs to be. Salt will what? No, power. Chandra, we didn't hear that. If you can say it so, slower, what will the salt do? So, salt, if it's in direct contact with yeast, will um, deactivate the yeast. So that's why oh, you, use, okay. so you use the flour as a barrier between the salt and the yeast. Dude, this is like a lab. So I'm going to use a mixer in now, and I'm going to mix it on uh, low speed. So you can see the flour and the water is really coming together. It's going to take some time before it's fully combined. And that's what we're looking for, fully combined. Wow. You can see the flower or the dough that's stuck inside of the bowl is pulling her away from the bowl. I just have to say that all Indian aunties want one of these in their kitchen right now. <laughs> yeah, I bought it at a Black Friday sale like a few years ago. <laughs> It really works for roti. I do my roti like this. <laughs> so, um, you can see it's come together and all. But what we're looking wow. for is, um, it's, it's likely on the sticky side. So, I'm going to add a little bit of flour. And What we're aiming for is really smooth. It's going to put a little bit more. When it pulls away completely from the side of the bowl. Yes, Havisha, I'm also envying this mixer. 
Okay, so I'm gonna just switch this off and I'm going to touch it. The best way to check is to touch. So see, it's still really sticky. So I'm gonna have to. And really, when you're making bread, there's no perfect. Um, I mean, if you're following a recipe, there's no exact way. I mean, it depends on the, the brand of flour you have and how well it hydrates. Some flour uh, needs more water to hydrate. So right. you can use the, me the measurements given in any recipe as a guide, but there's some leeway. You have to maybe slightly adjust the liquid content and or the flour content. But what you're aiming for is a very soft, smooth, silky dough that's not sticky. Mm -hmm. A soft, smooth dough that's not? That's not sticky. Sticky, okay. Yeah, it, it shouldn't be tacky. Like if you touch it, you, the dough, it should, you should get an indent and it should, it should like spring back. Okay. See, like now when I touch it, it's not really, well actually on the top, it's a little bit sticky. Okay. Um, but this, yeah, I, I actually, I think this dough is fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it onto a, a onto the surface here and show you if you had to knead this dough by hand, what you would do. So what you want to do is you, you pull the dough back or back to you and then you push it and you keep doing that. You pull the dough back. And you keep repeating or repeat that step for about 10 minutes. That's how you knead dough by hand. Mm -hmm. And that mixer will just do that. It's doing the same thing for you, just automatically. Cool. So by doing this, you're developing the gluten in the flour and you're getting a nice structure being developed, a very elastic structure. So when the yeast starts, activate, uh, starts eating the sugars that's available in the dough, it's going to release some carbon dioxide. And those carbon dioxide gases are going to be trapped by the gluten complex formed in the dough. So it's all going to be trapped inside, and that's how the dough rises. The gases are not really escaping the dough. So that's why you have you to have eat it. the dough. There you have it, folks. The science of dough 101. Right. So I'm going to put it back into the mixer and let it uh, knead for about 10 minutes. To get that gluten really uh, work. Right. Um, so I already had Okay, we're struggling to hear you now. Okay, so I've already pre made a batch of dough. I started it about uh, 4 30. So it's rising mm -hmm. for almost an hour and a half now. So mm -hmm. When that dough is ready, you're going to lightly oil it and you're going to place it in a bowl and loosely cover it in plastic wrap. And after an hour and a half, you can see the dough has really risen. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can mm -hmm. see how okay. large the volume it is. Yeah, that's okay, a lot I'm bigger. Gonna... That's like more than double. So let me show you what, the, what our dough is, the volume of dough is that we just made. This is what this is what we just made, and after an hour and a half, mm -hmm. it should rise to that point. So you can see it's a considerable amount okay. of Yeah, two to three times bigger. Yes. So that's what you. So I'm going to. Uh, cut the bitch. Cut the bitch. Okay. So I'm just gonna prep the bed. While the butternut is baking, I'm going to work on our baby marrow. What we're trying to get is uh, some baby marrow ribbons. Oh. So I'm just gonna- I've Let me two. guess, there's a gadget for this. There is. So there's, uh, these are large baby marrows. Try to get the largest baby marrow you can. Unfortunately, where I stay, I don't get the marrow, I get baby marrow. So, for this recipe, you're looking for the largest baby marrow. So, a lot of my ingredients are from like midway of the lockdown. 
So, um, <laughs> they're not the we all know like Dolby folks. All right. So, um, so I'm using a mandolin cutter, and this is on a thick slice setting. Chandra, are those things safe? I remember like slicing my fingers on those things when I was a kid, but I'm also very special like, like that. So it comes. So it comes with this uh, this this holding this tool to hold the vegetables, and your hands are see so your fingers are safe. They're in contact. With They're not in contact with the blade. Mm -hmm. The problem with this is uh, baby marrow doesn't really cling to this very well, so I'm going to try my luck with this. But uh, mm -hmm. we want really even slices of uh, baby marrow. So that's why I'm using this mandolin. You can cut it with a knife. You can. Oops. So there's a ribbon. Okay. So that's what you're looking for. So it's gonna get the other marrow. All right, so Chandra, when you speak, you have to be in front of the camera because when you turn, we can't hear you. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so this is the ribbon that we're looking at. Mm -hmm. so I'm just going to do the same with the other baby marrow. Because it tends to slip out, put it back. So we've got our baby uh, marrow ribbon. So the next element is, so actually, um, this is not a tomato-based pizza. This is a white pizza. A white pizza is something that uh, uses olive oil uh, to coat the base of the pizza. We're not going to use uh, tomato. I think so, that's interesting because I heard that originally, to, uh, original pizzas, like Italian pizzas, were not tomato-based. But that's some history I don't know. I know uh, traditionally they are. That's where the okay. margarita comes from. But like, okay. but um, so to get the the base or the, or the coating for the base, the sauce for the base, it's basically olive oil, and we're going to flavor it with something called in or asafoetida. It adds a very savory taste. And we're going to salt it and we'll season it with salt and black pepper. So it's very simple. So let's get that going. I'm just going to use a tablespoon of olive oil. Look at those leaves. And we're going to season it with um, a teaspoon of hing. Tell us more about hing. Not many people know about it. It's a resin. It's actually a, a resin from a, from a tree. A resin a from a? From a tree. OK. And uh, that resin is, is sort of, it's harvested from that tree. and it's. Uh, it's sold actually as a as a block. It becomes a thick, almost like a stone-like structure, mm -hmm. and then they grind it into a powder. So it has a very sulfur. It has a very strong sulfur uh, scent, st flavor. And often we use it to cut down the um, uh, the gassiness in foods, right? Yeah, it's also used for that when you're making like. Or is an onion and garlic replace, replacement? It is an onion and garlic replacement. It has a very savory taste or fragrance, very similar uh, to garlic. So in this, I put about a, uh, half a teaspoon of salt. I am going to season it with some black pepper. And I'm 
going to just study together. And what you want yeah, is, for, yeah, there's a was. So what I'm gonna, what we're gonna do is just let the flavors infuse into the olive oil. Actually, I think it's getting a bit pasty. You can see. So we don't want it to be so pasty. We want it to be more on the thin side. Right, so I'm gonna move on to rolling the dough. Okay, so I'm just gonna prep for rolling out our base. Okay, so I've got my dough. I'm going to just punch it down lightly. I, I think, bring it closer, let's see. If you can see, can you see how airy the dough is? Mm. Let's see. Oh yeah, I can Those see that. The, that's all the gas that the yeast wow. released and uh, it's made the dough really airy and that's what you want. Mm. So I'm just gonna divide the dough into two. Just eyeball it. So what I do is I take the dough ball and you want to smooth the dough ball. So what I do is I cup the dough. I take the sides of the dough and I bring it down underneath it. And I keep doing it and rotate the dough. So then you get a nice smooth ball. I don't know if you got that. Can you did you did you follow that? Yeah, yeah. See, so at least with my eyes I did. So I'm tucking the sides underneath, and by doing so, I'm getting a nice, smooth dough. Okay, wow. So we're going to roll out the dough, not in flour. We're going to use some uh, semolina. So semolina is, because we're aiming for a, a crisp dough, a crisp crust, semolina is going to uh, really absorb free moisture on the surface of the dough, and it's going to mm -hmm. ensure that we get that crisp crust. because Semolina is a little bit uh, more thicker or faster than flour, so it has more. Okay, uh, you have to talk in front of the camera. Moisture. So, semolina is more? It's more coarser than flour, so it's going to absorb mm -hmm. more moisture than flour. Okay. So, I'm just going to take some semolina, just a little bit, sprinkle it over the dough, just coat it, and try and get your work surface coated as well so your base doesn't stick. And traditionally they use, um, or in Italy, they roll out these by hand, but um, we're using the cheat way. We're gonna roll it out with a rolling pin. Mm -hmm. so, so this is a I'm vegan to... pizza base, right? This is vegan. Mm -hmm. Yes. The pizza base at least. Yeah, the pizza base has no dairy in it. So yeah, it's completely vegan. So I'm trying, I'm aiming for a round base. But if it's if you can't roll it out very round, that's not a problem. Uh, these days, these rustic pizzas are are in trend, and they have all sorts mm. of shapes. So after I roll it, I am just rotating the surface a quarter. So Chandra, tell me about base thickness, because you know. There's people who like thick bases, people who like thin bases. So like, what's the science and what should we know about it? Well, I, it, it really is a personal preference. Uh, both have its place. Uh, there are times where I like really thin bases. And there's days where or times when I like a more bready dough. So it's, it's really a uh, personal preference. To get a more bready dough, you're going to have to use more yeast. Um, and if you want a thinner base, thin crust, you use less yeast. Because the more yeast you use, the more aerated the dough is going to be. So it's going to be very... Okay. Um, thickness of rolling. Yeah. And, and, and the thickness of rolling as well. So with this one here, this is actually an intermediate between a thin and a thick crust. It, it, it's... Mm -hmm. It's a healthy balance between the two. So for this one here, we're gonna roll it out to about 30 centimeters. 
and you'll see the final thickness will measure in hours or estimate output. Just picture. So you can see this is roughly 30 centimeters. And if we had to look at the thickness, we're looking at about half a centimeter thickness. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're gonna just unpeel the dough from the work surface. So, well, I just wanna get my trays. Okay, so I've got my baking tray, and it's lined with uh, parchment paper. And we're going to transfer this dough. Just try and get your hands really underneath it. Okay. I could try the turning by hand, I'm <laughs> stretching it by hand, but it's. Yo, <laughs> that's dangerous. <laughs> okay, so the other uh, trick to getting um, a very thin crust pizza is to pierce the dough so that you don't get much uh, bubbles forming when you're making the dough. So I'm using a dough. And there's the gadget. Most people use forks, but Chandra needs a gadget for this. Yeah, you can use a fork. It's going to take a little longer. <laughs> right, so the dough is dropped. That's quick. Yeah, that was very quick. Wow. Right. So people, um, people read tea leaves. I wonder if they read dough. What did you say? I said people read tea leaves. I wonder if they read dough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm going to take that uh, olive oil uh, base that we made earlier on. It's still actually a bit on the thick side. So I'm going to add a little bit more olive oil. Some of the things you just have to test it out. You just have to check it out by your eye. You know? You're looking for something very. Rough. That's the hing that's making it thicker, huh? It's the yeah, it's the hing. Right. So it's gonna base the dough. And what you're aiming for is a very even coverage. So we've covered the dough. So the next step is to use those uh, baby marrow ribbons. And we're going to place them like so over the base. Right. And how's your button? Huh? Butternuts. Okay, let's have a look at the butternut. You can see it's been about 15 minutes. The butternut is really uh it's getting caramelized and it's it's ready. Yeah. We can't hear you if you are speaking. No, we're not saying anything. Oh, uh, uh, I'm just gonna take the button out of the oven. Okay, how did it come? See. It's caramelized and um, you see it. so slightly brown. Mm, that's what you're aiming for. Okay, so I'm gonna put them down. How are we for time? How are we doing with time? We're doing good, don't worry. How much more do we have? Uh, one sec. 
I'm checking. So the pizza takes about yeah. 15 minutes to bake. Okay, so the next step is uh, I've got some uh, uh, grated mozzarella cheese. We're going to use about a uh -huh. cup. And we're going to sprinkle it evenly over. We don't want to completely cover the baby marrow because you want to let that green, those green sides show for visual interest. So, um, if I'm vegan, what could I use instead of cheese? Well, actually, nowadays there's lots of vegan options for cheese. So, um, yeah, I've seen it in my shops here. Some some brands available, some varieties available. So, as an alternative to the mozzarella we're using here, you could substitute an equal quantity of whatever vegan cheese you have available in your area. Kato wants to know if we can make our own vegan cheese. Um, you Do can. You um, I've seen some recipes around where you use uh, nutritional yeast. Uh, well, actually, that's more. How was that? But the uh, the the I've seen some vegan cheeses made with uh, uh, cashew nuts as a base. I don't have much experience in that, but I've seen some. Yeah. Uh, Kajal, uh, Sharadia is going to be up next and she's the vegan lady. We can also ask her. Okay, so um, I've just increased my oven temperature to 250 degrees. That's the temperature. 250 degrees Celsius. Mm -hmm. So that's the temperature we're going to bake these at. And we want to bake it at a slightly higher temperature and bake it fast so that uh, the dough doesn't rise too much. You get, and you get that nice crisp uh, uh, base of the oven. So the temperature also contributes to the thickness of the dough? Yes. If it bakes slower, it's going to rise a bit more. And it bakes longer. So if you bake it higher, you bake it, at a low, at a, you bake it faster, and you get that nice crisp. <laughs> Radha Raman is hungry. OK, so I'm just going to get our back. This is still piping apart. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to say, like, um, pizza is a very easygoing thing. It's very, uh, it's, it's based on people's personal preferences. So everybody has their own signature on pizza. So what I'm saying is that with pizza, there's no real rules, so to say. But there's one rule that I abide by, and that it, it, it pertains to the uh, toppings, where less is more. Mm. So you don't want to put lots of toppings on your pizza. Like you don't want to, uh, you don't want to make it completely heavy on top. You want your base, well, the more heavier you make it, the more soggier your base is going to get. So sure. you really want to err on the, on the left side. I don't know what's the opposite of liberal. You don't want to be so liberal with toppings. Okay. Also, it shouldn't be a sandwich, you know? It's not an open sandwich. Yes, it's not. So, that's the button I in there. And then lastly, we're going to just season this with some salt and uh, black pepper before it goes into the oven. So we're just going to give it a generous sprinkle of salt. Mm -hmm. And this is your regular salt. And then we're going to give it, give it another generous sprinkle of freshly ground black pepper. Okay, so it's all ready for the oven. So, some people are inviting themselves over the subway. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, by the time they get to you, it'll be it won't be night anymore. <laughs> so it's gonna bake in at uh, two hundred and fifty degrees mm -hmm. for about ten minutes. 
10 to 15 minutes. We'll just time it. Uh, we'll check up on it again at the 10 minute mark. You don't mm -hmm. want the crust to get uh, burned. You want a nice deep golden brown. I thought it was time for another bonus pizza, but I don't think. Let's okay. see how it goes. Um, so there is one final element that we're going to uh, do for the pizza, and that we're going to do uh, when the pizza comes out, we're going to sprinkle it over, and that's uh, sage leaves. So we're going to deep fry some sage leaves. So here Wait, I've got some you, sage. You're breaking up, Chandra. So we're going to deep fry some sage. Is that what you said? Yes. I've got some okay. sage leaves. This is again from my garden. So it's oh, cool. organic. So it's washed. And we're going to use about, since these are smaller, we'll use about 20 leaves. If they were bigger, you'd use about uh, 10 to 12. And again, this is like, it's also your personal preference. Sage does have a very overpowering taste. So um, you don't want to add too much. It will then um, sort of vary the flavor of the butternut and uh, the way you narrow. So um, I've got uh, 60 molds of uh, sunflower oil, and I'm going to heat it up. And when it's hot, we're going to throw in the sage leaf and let it uh, fry for about five minutes until it's uh, nice and crisp. Okay, so the oil is getting hot. Tell us something about sage. Is there any benefits that we need to know about? Other than its uh, flavor, I don't know much about sage. Great. I know it's very calming. I know that if you dry it and if you keep it uh, next to your pillow uh, while you're sleeping, uh, it has a very calming effect. Great. I always wanted pizza next to my pillow. Uh, the same is true for lavender. Very calming effect. So you can see it's really uh, it's frying up. So we want it to get nice and crisp. Almost like chips. Like sage chips. Okay. Yeah, and you can hear now it's slowly um, stopped sizzling. So whatever moisture was there is gone, and uh, the sage is is ready. So it does a very quick, it fries very quickly. So I'm just going to take it out. All right. So we'll set that aside for when the pizza comes out. So. Uh, the final element is um, a nice sweet salad that we're going to do. So for the salad, I've got two handfuls of uh, baby spinach. This is again from my garden. I want your there's garden. Lo <laughs> there's lots of joys to growing your own veggies. So I really encourage uh, everybody to, to explore this. And this, from the time I planted the seeds to harvesting, was about 25, 30 days. So it grows wow. very fast. So I've got two handfuls of um, maybe spinach. Then I'm going to use some feta. We'll use about two discs. Well, we'll just eyeball it. If you're vegan, you can just leave out the feta, right? You can, or you can use vegan uh, cheese. It's not the same. It's not a real replacement for feta, but um, yeah, you can just use vegan cheese and cube it like, like we're doing. Bronwyn would, Bronwyn would like to know if there's any tips about doing your own herb garden. 
So um, it depends where you stay in the country also. I stay in a very, uh, I stay inland, so I get lots of frost. So for me, I can only grow herbs in the summer and spring uh, seasons. Like now my herb garden is coming to an end and it's going to go completely dormant or dead in the winter season. But if you live in a frost-free area, uh, the trick with herbs is they need full sun. Don't plant them where they get ready. They need complete or full sun. And then they'll grow their best of that. Uh, cool. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say if you've never started a herb garden, just choose one of your favorite herbs. Actually, basil is the easiest herb to grow. You can, this is my basil from my garden. And uh, oh, wow. I harvest it, and I just keep it in a little jar of water, or a vase of water, and I use it whenever I need to in the kitchen. So it stays fresh like this. So this herb... Amazing! Wow. Yeah, a jar of basil in my kitchen. It's, it's, I think it's like quarter of a tree, even less. They grow so vigorously, and they're so healthy. It's actually a shame to buy these things when you can grow them so easily. Uh. And basil was also, I mean, yield pesto, you know. Pesto would be a good option for pizza also, no? Yes. Yes, it is. So, um, the next step is, I've got some papaya. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to also cube these, and we're going to add that to the salad. You could use strawberries. Actually, what I normally do is I use strawberries. Or blueberries, yes. but because we're under lockdown, and um, I didn't want to go to the shop unnecessarily, I used what I had on hand. Papaya in a salad is it a is it a is it a traditional thing or is it something exotic? It's exotic. Coming from Durban, where we eat carrot salads, <laughs> I'd say this is on the exotic side. <laughs> hmm. I'm thinking about my mom's famous carrot salad. Your mom's here. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing. I grew up with that. Okay. And bunny chows. Uh, carrot salad and bunny chows. Yes. So I've also got some um, fresh figs from my tree. I have a fig tree. So wow. we're going to also slice some figs. This is what fresh figs look like inside. It's very Amazing. soft. It's very syrup. The ones you get in the shop, I notice. And the best figs, even like, like, they are, even if you buy them from Woolworths, I mean, and you pay such high prices and um, they're actually very tasteless. And what I found is the figs from my tree almost have like a, like, like a syrup oozes out of them. It's like honey wow. comes out of it. It's really sweet. It's very syrupy. I'm not sure if it's just uh, wow. for the variety I have. But this is amazing. I never thought we could grow figs in the backyard. It's actually very easy. It's such a trouble for me to tree to grow. It doesn't require anything. It just requires some good soil and that's it. I, I hardly take any care of it. I don't even water the tree. It gets watered by, by the rain. Yeah. So um, we're just going to add some uh, pecan nuts just for some crunch. What's cooking in the oven? Oh. Okay. So I've got a handful of pecan nuts, and I'm just gonna roughly break them. You could, you could. Would toast we toast them? them? Mm -hmm. Sorry, you yeah. You could. You could. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think because we're a little short on time, I I'm gonna okay. skimp on more, but it does intensify the flavor. Yeah. But roasting nuts generally intensifies. So I recommend you. Okay. So we just scatter them evenly across. 
we can go on for another 10 or 15 minutes, so don't panic. <laughs> okay. Okay, and then we're going to dress the salad and we're going to use some fresh lemon. We'll just use half the slice. Let's just cut this on the chopping board. So we'll just use half a lemon and uh, squeeze it. Just try and catch the seeds. So yeah, you just give it a light drizzle. I see some seeds falling there. And then we just give it a light drizzle of olive oil. I'd say this is about a tablespoon and a half at most. Mm -hmm. That's about it. And uh, I've got, I've had some, my mint in my garden is growing so vigorously also, it was just a shame not to use it. So I'm going to use uh, some of the, some mint and we'll, we'll just garnish the salad with some. So I'm just going to tear it. I'm not going to chop it. I'm just going to tear it with my hand. That looks really good. <laughs> yeah, it really, really does. Okay, so lastly, we'll just season it with some salt. Just a little bit, not too much. Like a, about a pinch, generous. See? And again, some black pepper. You can see I've used black pepper in lots of It's really, uh, very widely used. Ingredient. Mm -hmm. And that is our salad already. Done in like five minutes or less. Yeah, really so let's have a look at the pizza and we can see the butternut is really caramelized and the base is golden. So that's the color we're looking for. And you can see it's sizzling a lot in the oven. And I'd say it's ready. So we're gonna take it out. Here's the pizza, and you wow. can see it's really well cooked. You wow. can see the cheese is evenly browned. It's really looking good. Wow. So, that what, looks I amazing. Done, what I would have done was um, if I had parsley, unfortunately, I don't have parsley growing in my garden. I would have put a tablespoon of freshly uh, chopped parsley, but I do have uh, dried parsley. So when you're substituting dried herbs for fresh herbs, remember dried herbs are more uh, concentrated in flavor. So I'd, I'd uh, reduce it by a third. So a tablespoon of fresh parsley will equal about a teaspoon or slightly less of dried parsley. So we're just gonna sprinkle it evenly over the pizza. And then lastly, we'll put our crisp sage leaves over. And you just wanna scatter it evenly over or place it evenly over. You can hear, I don't know uh, if you can hear, it's got a real crisp to it. Mm -hmm. 
don't know if you heard that. Yeah, <laughs> it's you can hear it. Okay. Like Rice Krispies. So because these leaves are small, I'm actually going to use almost all of them. Actually, I'll use all of them. And that is the theme song. Wow. Okay. So the next step is um, to to make the offering. I don't know, Rubini, you want to say something about that? Yeah. Well, generally, in a bhakti yoga tradition, um, cooking is a yoga, <laughs> and it's an act of devotion, an act of love. And so therefore, all the food that we eat is converting material. When we prepare food, we want to convert material energy to spiritual energy, which means it becomes a devotional offering. And during these, uh, that's cute. Uh, during these um, sessions, we've heard a lot about mantra. And so mantra, you know, is the instrument which we use to convert material ingredients to spiritual ingredients through the act of devotional offering. So we'd like everyone to unmute your microphone and chant with us the Hare Krishna Mantra three times as a way to offer this meal devotionally. Everyone's good with that? Let's do it on one, two, three. Unmute your mics, people. And we can do it. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Transcendental song. Okay, that's it. I, I'm going to slice the pizza if you want to wait around. Sure. Uh, we want to unmute Chandra Shaker though. We are. Can you hear us? Yeah, we can hear you now. Oh, wow. There it goes. Wow. That's amazing. So yeah, that's what it looks like. It really it smells amazing. I wish you guys could smell it. <laughs> oh, I wish we could taste it, but anyway. <laughs> wow, it okay. looks awesome. So yeah, that's it from Thank me. You. Thank you for joining me. Oh, <laughs> I'm smelling pizza in Durban. <laughs> okay. So thank you, Mo. Um, does anybody have any uh, burning questions before Chandra Shaker goes? If anybody has any burning questions about this recipe or things he's used, anything, if you got 30 seconds to put it out in this chat to write, type your name in. But in the meantime, I just want to say thank you so much for putting it together and letting us yeah. into your home virtually. Uh, also, it's so nice to see those things from your garden. It, that's really, really cool. And yeah, we will catch you soon. Um, we'll share the recipe uh, with everyone on the group when you send it to us. And yeah, bon appetit. Tell us how it tastes. <laughs> We'll do so. Thank you again. Gianna, maybe she it. No, 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 no. Yeah, Gianna, you, you want to taste it? it? No, no. Come on, you want to taste it? Uh, no, taste it. it. No, 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 no. Go for it. Yes, come on. Come, on, come up from behind that camera.
no, no. I'll, I'll help you. Oh. What's wrong with you, Gianna? Everybody else in this chat wants to taste it, and you're the only one who can. <laughs> I am going to taste it, but just not on the camera. Right. So, Gianna's going to. Come on. Let's, let's see how I can do this. Okay. Have some salad too, Gianna. <laughs> right. Mm. It's mm. hot. No, no. <laughs> Very good. Great. Tell us about the flavors. Me, I can't describe things. Very good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. That's good enough. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, you so much. Much. Thank you so much. You are yeah, we're so we're very honored. Uh, we're gonna leave <laughs> this meeting now and leave you to your supper. <laughs>